Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons and specifically I'm going to talk about Macarth the Crimson. Uh, this is a non-player character or a character that is in the Rise of Tiamat. Uh, this is a Dungeon Master Guide. It's not a video for players. If you are a player planning to play in this game or you are currently playing in the game, it will be full of spoilers. You need to go and watch one of my other videos. But if you are a dungeon master, this is absolutely a dungeon master's guide to help you. I have run the adventure already. I have used this character, and I've got a bit of, I've got a few things to say about Macarth the Crimson. Uh, now, Macarth the Crimson is, to be honest, an unusual character in that the situation that she's got herself into is quite peculiar. Uh, a direct result of her own actions and to a large extent she's she's like a very smart person who's also incredibly dumb um, and unfortunately she's fallen into a trap and that trap is with a dragon. Now Macarth the Crimson is a female tiefling mage. Uh, she is a member of the Arcane Brotherhood, a league of mages based in the city of Luk Luxkin and this is located at the fabled host tower um, this is really basically the host tower of the arcane the host tower is an academy of expert or the best and brightest of mages in Faerun like this is like the mage top gun you might say for those of you who are familiar with top gun just uh, imagine that's what we're dealing with here this is very it's very very hard to get into the arcane brotherhood and also incredibly difficult to get into the host tower it is full of all sorts of magic lore and magic items things that normally mages never get to actually inspect study or handle in any way macarth actually is an expert and a sage in 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 the area of dragon lore and in dragon relics uh, she gained access and admission to the host tower with ease simply because she's rather well known. She's quite famous as it happens. Macarth has got an overwhelming drive to and desire to learn more about dragons, uh, even a reckless motivation towards it unfortunately for her and to a large extent other people as well. The Arcane Brotherhood did not have enough lore and information for her needs or desires uh, on dragons, so she eventually decided that she had to go and take things into her own hands. After all of her studies, she concluded that the only way she could get the information that she wanted was in fact to go and ask a dragon. Well, seriously? that's your solution. It's not a very good solution. Um, so there were magic items and magic uh, relics and spells and tomes, books that were stolen from the host tower during the last Rage of Dragons um, battle and um, that could actually answer a lot of her questions and she figured that the only one who could answer those questions was a dragon by the name of Arathator, I believe that's right. Arathator is a white dragon who helped a group of dragons steal magic items and spell books from the host tower. And she thought, well, I will go and ask Arathator because I've got a basic idea of where Arathator is. The other dragons I don't know quite so much about. I'll go and ask that dragon. Like, like that isn't going to go badly. Uh, essentially, it does go badly. Macarth went missing during a sailing expedition to the Sea of Moving Ice. Um, this was the assumed location, it's pretty much a guess, a location of the Drake, the Drakehorn and also Arathator. It was believed that the Drakehorn and Arathator were in this location, which meant that a lot of the missing items and spell books and tomes should also be with Arathator. Uh, that's not necessarily the case, but that's what was assumed. She's been missing for about three years. She's been gone a long time, and that has actually been playing on her mind quite a lot. Uh, she hasn't weathered the time well, as we discover. Uh, Macarth used sending spells to report that she was taken by ice hunters, 
I'm I just going to call them Eskimos basically uh, into a huge or large iceberg and was never heard of again after that there have been attempts to use um, sending spells and scrying spells and uh, spells that will can locate objects they were not able to locate MacArth but they were able to locate MacArth's sailing ship and unfortunately it was badly damaged it was uh, all the crew were completely wiped out and destroyed and they were not able to actually locate MacArth herself uh, they suspect that if she is still alive that MacArth is being protected or blocked by powerful protective magic that Arathator has access to and that is exactly what's taking place um, Arathator is basically keeping MacArth as a prisoner now why has Arathator captured her well it's not just captured she she's also been bribed um, bribed with the exchange of information and access to the to the items that he actually has in his possession so captured and bribed the only thing is that uh, the provisor is she gets access to an in ex in exchange for all of this information she has to replace the rider of his grief-stricken partner who's just not recovered from the last rider that she had it's a tough ask and that's exactly what she's been asked to do okay so right now you will find that at some point your players will have deep suspicions that MacArth has gone bad because MacArth the Crimson is not in fact evil but she's been gone a long time she decided to go and pursue a dragon of all things and she has an infernal bloodline she's a tiefling um, so that is already going to sort of be a problem particularly when the players encounter her for the first time what had happened is MacArth was not killed uh, due to the fact that she had uh, things on her items on her that indicated she was a member of the Brotherhood Arathator didn't kill her killed everybody else and decided to strike a bargain now MacArth was smart enough to actually convince the dragon she would agree to his terms she hasn't and she's been pretty much been held captive trying to decipher all of the ancient writings the dragon has in his possession um, she has been trying to escape with no success she is so worn down by the process that she is absolutely adamant that in no way can she ever escape and she is going to die uh, at some point when the dragon is finally fed up and has nothing more to do uh, for or do with her um, it's probably not going to be the case but she realizes that every attempt she's tried to um, put into place to escape has failed and she's really she's quite hopeless at this point you can kind of understand that very very powerful dragon she will assume that when the party of characters or adventurers or heroes show up that they are, they are there to kill her because she's been gone so long and she's still alive and she's studying and writing and seems to be working for the dragon um, or that they are there to try and save her the problem is that she doesn't believe that the party can save her she believes she is a lost cause she's quite arrogant and stubborn so therefore actually getting her to assist them in any way is going to be hugely difficult because she thinks she's going to die at the uh, at the will of the dragon and basically is just a plaything or toy for this dragon she's going to have a lot of trust issues she's going to require quite a few things to happen before she ever considers uh, doing what the party wants so there is a large list and requirement on her part she will provide detailed information to the player's characters on the uh, the dragon Arathator and his lair and where everything is she she's happy to do that she will not come and fight but she will let them go and sort that out and if they are successful and come back and get her great but what does it, what do they have to do they have to one get hold of the dracorn because she's not going to let that go uh, she's going to want all of those magic items and books that she's been studying that are in Arathator's possession she's going to want all of that transported back to the host tower 
with her because she's going to want to have access to it and she's going to want to have absolute proof that they killed that dragon dead as a doorknob whoa it's rather a lot to ask um, I don't imagine that too many players are going to have a big issue with trying to do that because that's what they're there for they're after the um, drake horn but if a dragon needs to be killed and it's stuff taken I'm sure they will oblige so as a result there's rather a lot going on with uh, MacArth. We know that uh, her her personality is that of a, a fa fairly arrogant and stubborn individual. We know that she is driven to um, to find more information and knowledge. Her ideal is the acquisition of information and knowledge, particularly around dragons. She is bound really only to herself and the Arcane Brotherhood and nobody else, certainly not to Arathator this dragon, and certainly not to the party. Those are the things that she is um, bound to. And her flaw is her over, her indulgence and her driving force in the acquisition of dragon lore and information and knowledge. And this has led her down this terrible path where she find, finds herself in a situation where she doesn't believe she can ever escape. So a complicated character um, and with an, an awful lot of backstory behind her. Uh, out of all of the characters that I can think of in the entire adventure, her information is scattered from uh, the first chapter into the second chapter. So all through that section you're going to find, and it's not just in one place, it's, it's even chapter 2, or episode 2, The Moving Ice, you'll find her information is all over the place. So you have to sort of pick and pluck information that I've talked about from various locations to get it all and then squeeze it into one location um, on your notes. So I'm hoping that this has been helpful to you. I do have other videos on the topic regarding the rise of Tiamat. And you are welcome to go and watch those if you are a dungeon master, absolutely. I have a video on how to prepare for the Rise of Tiamat. I have an overview. When I uh, ran the adventure, I did an overview after, so you could sort of get a picture of what it was like, sort of a, uh, a really broad brushstroke look at it. And I will continue to do more videos on the topic. Um, so absolutely keep watching my videos. I have hundreds of videos for players and dungeon masters as it happens, and you're welcome to go and check those out. I have a Patreon page where you can support me, so I keep doing videos on this particular topic or other topics that you might enjoy. Uh, as it happens, the Patreon patrons get access to my live streams when they go unlisted, and um, nobody else will get them, just the patrons, so they get all the Q&A at the end. On top of that, they also get priority on the topics that I talk about, and this is a patron request, so I've done it, and I will continue to do them as long as patrons ask for it. It is a topic that doesn't have a lot of information on it. I have affiliate links to the book depository on Amazon where you can buy stuff online, pay the same price, I get a small commission, it's fantastic. I also have a merchandise shelf which you can buy, and buy stuff. As it happens, it's a gold dragon uh, with a dice, uh, with Keep rolling those 20s, which is my catchphrase. And hey, make sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hit that bell button to be notified when I go live, and I go live a lot, and when I edit new videos, and I do edit videos. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. Oh yeah, keep rolling those 20s.